to get us started, we will have a letter read that is addressed to Mr. Bashadi from one Dylan. Says, hey, engraving the team, keep it clean. Been a while, and everybody is throwing their two cents into this Lamar situation, but I thought I'd look at it differently. And here we go. Dear Mr. Bashadi, recently you have came into a gold mine in Mr. Lamar Jackson. You can make the argument that there are maybe 24 or so teams who wouldn't be interested in him due to their own quarterback situation, but if we are dealing with figures and numbers, then let's look at it this way. Your net worth has increased on estimate over $2 billion since 2018 when Lamar came about. Lamar, since playing for Baltimore, has been the leading rusher since 2018, as well as the leading passer, although as QB1, that isn't a shock. Uh, through moves, not entirely up to you, there has been trades and moves to invest in more well-known talent on the defensive end opposed to the offense, whether it's Marcus Peters, Calais Campbell, Yannick Ngakwe, uh, or even Marcus Williams this year. Yet, no prolific stud to join the offense and set the world on fire. Since entering the league, he has done a phenomenal job to reignite Baltimore and have relevance to the franchise. He has arguably saved jobs at Baltimore as well as getting recognition for those around him. People can talk about him underperforming or falling short of the marks, but at the end of the day, unless you win a Super Bowl, it doesn't matter. And even though Aaron Rodgers is incredible, he only has one ring. Peyton Manning, for all his work ethic and determination, has two rings. Dan Marino has none. Truth be told, some players are unlucky and some just don't get the chance. But either way, as a businessman, money talks and Lamar keeps your franchise relevant. But at the end of the day, what do I know? I'm just some guy from Australia that recognizes for the first time since 2012 and the end of the Ray Lewis career. There's finally someone who stands for and represents Baltimore in the purple and black. He says, sorry for the long message, but as I just said, I just want to look at it from a different way. Team keep it clean, stay strong, stay well, and stay blessed. What, what, what a beautiful way uh, to start us off with a letter to Mr. Bashati uh, from my guy Dylan himself. Um, and yeah, you, you, you made several good points. Um, I don't disagree with anything that you said. Um, as far as the uh, them really like going after the defensive guys and um, – and really kind of being like, uh, about the, the offensive guys. Um, as far as what the, the revenue, the revenue, I mean, hey, the, the revenue, that's what it's about, right? The NFL's a business. Lamar has increased the Ravens' revenue and put more money in Steve Bishotti's pockets. Um, and he, it's been significant, too. Um, the primetime games, the memorabilia, the jerseys, the all, everything, the ticket for sales, all, yeah. So all that has definitely uh, went up with a uh, Lamar Jackson. Um, so yeah, I I don't even have a follow up. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. So team keep it clean welcome to another episode of questions from y'all and before we get into it i gotta give a special shout out to the newest team keep it clean patrons uh ox for omega and ed l uh and nasir uh as well appreciate y'all now normally uh we would start off by a question from some of the newest patrons but they didn't send any questions so they were just signing up to show support so i appreciate it uh and also got to give a shout out to the newest team keep it clean channel member big meal so appreciate y'all appreciate everybody um, just continuing to show a, a lot of extra support uh, towards the channel because uh, it does make a really, really big difference. Now, um, speaking of Ray Lewis, because he was brought up in the last question. Next question came from my guy, Tay Dome. He said, what's good, fam? Uh, we all been talking about Lamar, which is very important. But what about Marcus Peters? Will we lock him up because uh, he means a lot to us? Um, and that's just a quick question that I had. Keep up the good work. And it's hashtag Forever Tay and hashtag Team Keep It Clean. Appreciate that. Uh, well, Marcus Peters, I think it's one of those things where they're just really waiting it out. Um, I don't think, and it's, it's sad to think about it because it's Marcus Peters, man. But I don't think it's a guarantee that he's here next year. Um, this is the last year of his deal. Um, and I, I don't know, man. I, I just... I could see the Ravens being like, hey, 
thanks for everything. And, and of course, you don't want it to be like that. But again, with business, uh, you, you got to make business decisions. But I, I could see the Ravens uh, moving on from Marcus Peters uh, after this year. I would love to be wrong about that because uh, we love Marcus Peters uh, for sure. Um, but I, I, could, I, I could see a scenario where that ends up being the case. But I think right now they're just in wait and see mode. Uh, they're in, um, let's see how he bounces back from his injury uh, from last year. Let's see how he responds to it because uh, there, there's, there's no rush. There, there's no rush to re-sign uh, Marcus Peters. Um, with the different guy, there is kind of a rush to re-sign him as your franchise quarterback, but um, yeah. Next question came from my guy, Jarvo. He said, have you ever thought about interviewing more or, firm, or former, or former <laughs> current Ravens players? Uh, so if you could interview one current and one former Raven, who would it be? And what three questions would you ask? Mm, um, current... Lamar, former Ray Lewis. Uh, what three questions would I ask? I can't say that because somebody might try to take them uh, when they interview those people. Next question came from my guy Earl T. He said, Ain't Graven, I'll try not to make this long. Been enjoying the channel since the car videos when you, you <laughs> when you were using wired headphones. LOL. Hey, man. Hey. I actually still use wired headphones. If I put on the headphones, because I, I don't have uh, AirPods. I bought my wife AirPods, but I don't have AirPods myself. Um, so when I plug in the headphones, I, I plug them in and hey, I hook it up. But anyway, and then with my phone too, like it's weird. I, I don't know what happened to it over time, but on speaker, I can hear fine. But when it's not on speaker and I just put it to my, I, I, it's, it's super, super low. Uh, so something's off with it. But anyway, but you know how iPhones do iPhone. When they want you to get a new iPhone, they, they make all this like weird stuff start happening to your current iPhone. You know how they do. So hopefully Ravens, hopefully they start doing that with their offense. They upgrade it. But anyway. He said, uh, I'm proud to see the growth and how it's went from that to pretty much a full production. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know about all that. No, I don't know about no full production, but I appreciate you. He said, keep up the consistency and great work. Now, I've been a fan of Baltimore since they actually had a poll for residents of the city to vote on the name. Basically, a long time. My question is, yeah, so you were a fan of the Ravens before they were even the Ravens, before they were even a thing. He said, my question is, even though we would love to win the Super Bowl this year, should Ravens fans be a little nervous about it? Of course you should. You should always be nervous about your team's uh, expectations and what you hope they accomplish this year. Yeah, anything that, that you're nervous about, um, that just means you care about it. That's what I always, I tell that to Carter, I tell that to my wife, I tell that to myself. Anything that you're nervous about, uh, it just means that you really do care about it. But anyway, he said, if Lamar doesn't sign a contract but goes out and does a Joe Flacco, we've seen what happened. But after that, his deal is probably going to be so enormous that the team is going to have to sacrifice players. We've got a lot of players on rookie contracts, but we have some with pretty decent deals. And we know uh, the cap. <laughs> he said the cap only applies to the Ravens. LOL. Is the Super Bowl worth losing Stanley, Humphrey, or even Andrews? Who said you even got to lose all those guys? Like. Really, who says you even got to lose all those guys? Because they, they are on their contracts. Marlon Humphrey is on his contract. Uh, Ronnie Stanley is on his big contract. Mark Andrews, he's on his big contract. Just because you pay the quarterback, it doesn't mean like, all right, we pay the quarterback, we can't do anything else now. That whole, like, the thing with Joe Flacco and his contract, I don't know what that was um, with the whole Anquan Bolden thing. But think about it, like, what um, Ronnie Stanley and Mark Andrews, that's it. They ain't got no big. They ain't got no other big investments on the offensive side of the ball. Cause Zeitler, what well, he's going into this is his second year with the team, so they be going into his third year next year. I think he signed a three year deal. I want to say, um, but the Ravens don't got big investments like that on offense anyway. Ronnie Stanley, Mark Andrews, and then it would hopefully end up being Lamar too. So I mean, nothing. To, what would change as far as the offensive side of the ball now on defense? Uh, we talked about Marcus Peters earlier. Um, then we'll see what happens with that. I think we'll obviously have to wait out this year. Um, but moves can still be done. It's just a matter of how bad you really want to make stuff happen. How flexible are you really willing to be with the whole cap? So it's up to the Ravens if they really want to do something like that or not. The last question on this episode came from my guy, Manuel. He said, the unwanted bait we hear in the media. Uh, what's up, Engraven? We are now in football season this week. How hard uh, it was with a weekend without football. 
Uh, anyway, I fear the Ravens might fall into the bait of the media this year about not being able to come from behind, even though we proved it last year with the hospital of a team about Lamar can't pass, even though uh, he has proven otherwise. So on and so forth. I bet you that anonymous DC will show up in a crucial week, and I fear the Ravens and Lamar will fall for it if they don't scheme properly. Do you believe that the Ravens will really shut the media out, or will it get to them again in moments it shouldn't? Um, I don't think they'll shut the media out. Ravens have continued to show that they they listen, they hear all of that stuff. They continue to show that through the years. Um, so I don't think they'll shut the media out, but it's up to the Ravens to. Uh, when despite what people are saying So people could say whatever they want to say But it's up to the Ravens to hey, do Go out there, do their thing Execute, game plan, all that So on and so forth And, and just get the job done Because no matter And this is really in any type of field that you're in Regardless of what people are saying You still got a job to do Regardless of people running their mouths about this, that, and a third You still got a job to do Now if if people running their mouths about you, about what you do and the way you do it, if that bothers you and that makes you be like, all right, I, I, I can't do this no more, then whatever your position is, whatever job your job title is, maybe that's not the job for you. Maybe it's not. And I'm not saying that you're not allowed to get bothered by what people say because everybody's different. But especially with this NFL, like people going to talk, people going to say whatever. But it's up to you, despite whatever they're talking about, to keep it moving. Uh, and he said, also, I bet Lamar has already signed his contract. Why? In his Twitter response, he says, no, they didn't, instead of, no, they haven't. Could it be a typo? Perhaps, but he had time to correct it, and he didn't. I don't think he signed a deal yet. But, hey, maybe by the time you see this video, he still won't have signed a deal. With <laughs> anyway, he said, P.S., everyone wants Lamar to win the MVP. I want him to win a Super Bowl MVP, nothing less. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we would all, like, much rather a Super Bowl MVP than a regular season MVP. I mean, he already got one of those anyway. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he, like, got to made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. Shout out to Graven.